Now this may just be the most controversial video I've done to date. I'm gonna share why I do not take my dogs on a walk every single day, why I think you should consider the same, and on a lighter note, we'll also be sharing one of my newest favorite foods for dogs. So let's just jump into this video, right? From here. Taking our dogs on a walk implies that we grab their leash, we grab their poop bag, their favorite treats, which yes, all my favorites are linked below. We head outdoors into our neighborhood or to a local park, and we expect that nice J in the leash or that loose leash as they heal during this walk they are primarily paying attention to you and I or at least that is the expectation and therein lies the problem I don't want my walks with my dogs to always be about me I want walks with my dogs at least every other one to be in their favor. I want them to be getting the most out of it safely, of course. And I'll talk about what that means, but don't forget that if it wasn't for you and I, our dogs would never leave the four walls of our home. They rely on you and I to give them a mentally satisfying and enriching life. And one of the easiest and most effective ways to do that is to replace some of my dog's standard structured walks with what I call a sniffari. This is where their nose gets to lead the way for once. As long as they're not yanking me over and being unsafe, they get to take the rein, take the lead, and explore the world around them. And bonus, one immediate benefit I saw from implementing this at least two to three times a week, especially with Finn, was an improvement in his impulse control as well as improved loose leash walking. The way that dogs interact with their environment in the most enriching and mentally stimulating way is through their nose, smelling the bushes and the ground and the signs around them. In fact, this is even research-based. There's been a study that showed that nose work can actually lead to a more positive bias or optimistic viewpoint has been shown to increase their happy, calming, soothing hormones. Now, before I talk about what a sniffari is, how often I do them, and how I keep my dogs safe during them, I want to talk about one of the treats that's actually a complete and balanced food that I use during my walks when I'm doing a more structured walk, and that is Sunday's Food for Dogs. I have been testing this with my boys behind the scenes for the last few months. The manufacturing of this food compared to any any kibble is superior in my opinion. With kibble, it's cooked and extruded at extremely high temperatures. This could remove most of the essential nutrients out of the food, which is why most kibbles use synthetic vitamin packs, unlike Sundays where they air dry their food, which is a process of continuous circulating air that slowly removes the moisture out of the food to make this shelf stable. And as a result, you get this nutrient dense, highly packed palatable, whole, real food to feed your dog. Here you go, yes, yes. That can also, as I said before, easily be broken up into smaller pieces if you wanted to use these as training treats. One of the best parts about feeding a food like Sundays over a traditional popular kibble is that you're often gonna have to feed much less in quantity because it's not packed with starchy fillers, starchy carbs that are unnecessarily added to pad the pockets of these big kibble companies and because it's more nutrient dense because it's not manufactured, cooked, and extruded at extremely high temperatures. All of the nutrients, which you can see the guaranteed analysis down here, which is where you can calculate the carbs, by the way, if you wanna do a rough calculation on the carbohydrates on any dry food or kibble, you simply add up the protein, the percent right here in the guaranteed analysis, you add up the protein, the fat, the moisture, and the ash. You take that number, you subtract from 100, and that's a good rough estimate of carbohydrates in the food. Um, I love the fact that this food is very low in carbohydrates for a dry food. It ranges anywhere from 20, I think it's like 25 to 29%, which kibbles can be as high as 50, 60, 70%. And that's because many kibbles use an excessive amount of low quality, starchy, high carb ingredients like corn, legumes, lentils, but Sundays does not do that. They use real whole food ingredients. So all the nutrients that the dogs are getting or your dog is getting is from real food ingredients, not from synthetic vitamin packs. And they're even supporting this part of the video by sponsoring this section 
to help support our mission to save all the damn dogs. Now, let's talk about what a sniffari is and how you can do it with your dog today. Simply said, it's a sniff walk. It's where I allow my dog to lead the way with their nose based on what they're interested in. My main focus and goal of this walk is to keep them and myself, of course, safe. And as long as they're not yanking me over, I kind of let them guide where we go based on what they want to see. When we first started doing these, I just began in my own neighborhood. I gave the cue, go sniff, instead of the heel cue that I usually give. This was on leash, of course. And then slowly over time, we went to new areas, maybe a new park or a new trail. And I even use my longer lead leash, which my favorite ones are linked in my description below. Then after they understood kind of what go sniff meant, I would reward without encouraging them to do this, a focus on me. So if they'd kind of go sniff a bush or take, you know, use the long lead, which one of my favorites is 33 feet long, and they'd go sniff a tree. If they kind of looked back at me, I would reward that with my marker cue YES. And if they came back to me, I would give them a treat, but I wouldn't call them back to me right away. I'd give them the opportunity again to just explore. And a pro tip with this is if you start by doing these in your neighborhood, it gives your dog a chance to really understand and almost make a mental map of the neighborhood. So knock on wood, if your dog does, hopefully never, but if they did get out of the yard or out of the front door and they're running around the neighborhood lost, they're more familiar with their surroundings. So the likelihood of them being able to kind of find their way back home is higher if you've given them the opportunity safely on leash to do sniffaris in your own neighborhood. Allowing my dogs to use that nose to brain connection has been one of the fastest ways that I have seen my dogs relax, fastest ways to tire them out and to see them fully satisfied. Like it's one thing to take a ball for fetch and throw it over and over and over again to where your dog can't get up and they're laying there and they're panting and you can tell they're still mentally stimulated but they're physically tired. Doing a sniff walk not only physically tires my dogs because they are getting physical movement and sometimes we walk fast, we walk slow, uh, but they're also getting that mental stimulation to again engage their most interesting and engaging organ of their body. And the best part, you don't have to go on an extremely long sniffari for your dog to get the most out of it. There's been days where the weather has been a little questionable, maybe a storm's coming, or maybe it's starting to get a little warm, so I know I don't want to be out there for an hour walking, but I also know my dogs need some kind of exercise. We'll do a 10, 15 minute sniffari. Time flies by because honestly, it's really enjoyable for me just to kind of see where they lead me and take me. And by the time we're done, after 10, 15 minutes, they're conked out, they're super tired. And again, it's more than just them being physically tired, they're mentally satisfied. And I can see that by the way that they have improved behavior, less leash pulling when I'm walking on future walks because there's not as much tension of, wanting to explore or see or visit other things that's in their environment because they've had the opportunity through sniffaris to explore those. So things aren't as new or exciting or even scary because they've had the opportunity to investigate. And this is one of the quickest ways to help our dogs have better well-being, better welfare, and honestly, improved behavior all around. Now, I wanna talk more about leash skills. And when you want to have those structured walks, how I keep a loose leash, even with a crazy monkey like Finn. So click the video right here. Or if you want to learn more about foods and treats that I feed my dogs, you can click the video right here. And I hope you have a beautiful day, goodbye.